Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're just gonna take a look at some more examples of optimization problems. In the previous two videos, I talked about some guidelines for doing optimization problems or maximum minimum problems, and we looked at a number of examples. I just want to do a few more examples of questions that you might see just to give you uh, an idea of how to approach them. So the first problem says a book is designed so that its pages have a two centimeter margin at the top and at the bottom and a 1.25 centimeter margin on each side. If the total area of the page, so the whole page, is 300 square centimeters, what are the page dimensions that give the maximum printed area? So what we know, want to know is the width and the length of this page to maximize the printed area. So we need to come up with a function that expresses the area of the printed part of the page. Now I'm going to use length and width for the dimensions of the whole page. We want to maximize the printed area. I'm going to write the length of the printed part in terms of that L, but it will be L minus two minus two. So that will be L minus four. So the thing I'm maximizing is this area, not this whole area. Then the width of the printed area will be W minus 1.25 minus 1.25. So it will be W minus 2.5. So you, you want to have the function that you're maximizing. We have two unknowns. However, we do know that the total area is 300 square meters. So we know that L times W is equal to 300. So I can isolate either one of these variables. I will write W as at 300 divided by L. And I'm going to put that in for W in my function. So I'm putting that in for w and that gives me a function with just one variable. Before I differentiate it and set it equal to zero and solve, I'm going to simplify it by multiplying. So l times 300 divided by l will be 300 minus l times 2.5 will be 2.5 l. So I'm just foiling. Minus 4 times 300 divided by L will be 1,200 divided by L. Minus, minus gives me a plus. 4 times 2.5 is 10. And then I'm going to express this as 310 minus 2.5 L minus 1,200 L to the negative 1. That's just going to make it easier to differentiate. Now that I have my function that needs to be maximized, and I have it in terms of one variable and I have it simplified, let's differentiate. So the derivative will be zero minus 2.5 or negative 2.5 times one minus 1200 times negative one is negative 1200, so that makes it positive, 1200 L to the negative two. So that's the derivative of this function. I set that equal to zero. I'm going to write this as 1200 over L squared. Now I'm going to solve. We don't know for sure that that will give us a maximum area. We need to test. So we're testing the derivative in this interval. I can't choose zero like I normally do because I would have a denominator equal to zero. So I'll choose one. Negative 2.5 plus 1200 times one to the negative two, that would be 1200 over one, which is positive. 1200 minus 2.5, that's positive. So the function is increasing in that interval. And let's pick 25. If I take 1200, divide by 25 squared and add a negative 2.5, that value is going to be negative. So the function is decreasing. So we do know that this is a maximum. And then we'll make sure we've answered the question. It says, what are the page dimensions that give the maximum printed area? 
Well, we know the length is 21.9 centimeters and the width will be 300 divided by the length of 21.9, 13.7 centimeters. And we're done. Let's try one more example. A cone-shaped paper cup is to have a volume of 150 cubic centimeters. Find the height and radius of the cup that can be made from the least amount of paper. So they're talking about the volume, but that's given. So that's not the thing that we're going to maximize or minimize. What we're asked to do is find the least amount of paper. So that is a minimum question. And the amount of paper would be expressed as an area. We would, be, we would measure the paper as area. So we're minimizing the area. Therefore, we need a function for area of a cone. So if you look up area of a cone, you'll get a formula like this, but be aware that this represents the circle and this represents the cone part of this. And because it's open at the top, the area that we're looking for will just be pi r times s. S represents this slant height. So we have Two unknowns, we need to eliminate one of them. So if we were to take a cross-sectional piece of this cone, we would get this right triangle. So we know the relationship between R, H, and S is R squared plus H squared will equal S squared. Therefore, I can eliminate S and write S in terms of R, but it's also in terms of H. So I can't replace that, or I can, but then I still have two variables. So I have to think of a way to eliminate H and write H in terms of R. Well, that's where we use this volume. We know the volume of a cone is one third pi times radius squared times height. And if our volume is 150, I can isolate H. H will be 150 divided by 1 3rd pi r squared. And then I'm just going to multiply numerator and denominator by 3. So that's going to be 450 over pi r squared. Therefore, I can replace H in my formula with this. Now this is not going to be a very fun function to differentiate. But before I differentiate it, I'm going to simplify it a little bit. In order to simplify it, I square the numerator and the denominator. Then I'm going to combine these two terms by getting a common denominator. So I needed to change this. This is like r squared over 1. So I needed to multiply numerator and denominator by pi squared r to the fourth. Then, when I have a common denominator, I can combine these. My next step is to take the square root of each numerator and denominator. When I take the square root of the numerator and the denominator, I can then take the square root of each of these factors and just get pi over r squared. I can't do anything with this, but then that allows me to cancel the pi and allows me to cancel that r and leave that r. So once I clean all of that up, I end up with this as my function for area. Square root, which I'm gonna to change to power of one half, of this expression divided by r. Now areas in terms of one variable. I can differentiate, set it equal to zero and solve, but we're, we're gonna be working with an awkward function here that we need to use the quotient rule and we've got power. So it's not gonna be pleasant, but I will step you through it. So I need to use the quotient rule. And when I do that, I take the denominator r multiplied by the derivative of the numerator, which is a power. So it's one half this to the 1 half minus 1. Then I multiply by the derivative of what's inside. This is a constant. So it's pi squared times the derivative of r to the 6th, which is 6r to the 5th. The derivative of that term is 0. Then it's minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of r will just be a 1. All over r squared. I'm going to combine r times 1 half times 6 pi squared r to the fifth to get 3 pi squared r to the sixth. And then I'm just going to move that into the denominator of that term, minus this term over r squared. What I'm going to do is multiply numerator and denominator by this 
denominator. So I've multiplied this term by that, which makes that denominator cancel. I've multiplied this term by that, which I add the exponent to get a 1, and then I multiplied the denominator by this. I can further simplify in the numerator before I start my set it equal to 0 and solve. So this is my simplified uh, derivative of area, and I'm going to set this equal to 0. When you have a fraction equal to 0, the only way that that fraction can equal 0 is if the numerator equals 0, because the denominator cannot equal 0 or it's undefined. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the denominator. You can think of it just as multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator. So I will only get a solution is if this numerator equals 0. To solve it, we're going to just add 202,500 to both sides. We're going to divide by 2 pi squared. Then I'm going to take the sixth root. So r will equal the sixth root of this, 4.66. Now we have to test this. So we have to test our first derivative. Let's take a value of 1. When we take 1 and subtract this number, our numerator is going to be negative. Denominator will be positive, but that will be negative, so the function is decreasing. Then if we pick something like 10, 10 to the 6th power is way larger, so we know that we have a positive numerator and obviously our denominator is positive. So function is increasing in that interval. So we know that this is a minimum point. Let's make sure uh, we check the question and see what we need to give as an answer. It says, find the height and the radius. Well, we found the radius. The radius is 4.66 centimeters. The height will be if we take 450 and divide by pi times 4.66 squared, we get 6.59. I've said it a few different times uh, during these videos, these are not easy. This is, is, you know, one of the tougher ones because you're bringing in three different mathematical relationships, area of a cone, volume of a cone, as well as your right triangle theorem to be able to express the function you want in terms of one variable. So lots going on there. And I know that it seems overwhelming, but now that you've seen it, if you see something similar, you've got something to refer to. Just practice and uh, don't give up. Like I mentioned before, try to find a solved problem that's similar to the one you're working with if you are stuck, just to get you going in the right direction. Take care, and we'll see you on the next video.